Okay, welcome back. So, continuing with our module 4, in the previous lecture we have seen the monolith reactors and uh, we have also seen the production of thallic anhydride and in the within the monolith reactors we have seen how they are used for the uh, in the vehicles of the catalytic converter and uh, where the reactor is kept or the reactor is kept. So, moving ahead we now focus on another important chemical which is methanol. This methanol is one of the key chemicals in the bulk chemical huh, that is also a part of this module. So, we go with first with the methanol, the its reaction is kinetics and thermodynamics, then we move ahead and discuss the process flow sheet. So, first we will uh, introduce as you know the methanol is uh, known to you, this methanol, the properties of methanol. Then we discuss shortly the reactions, thermodynamics and catalysts, and then the generic process, the flow sheet of the generic process and finally, the flow sheet of the ICI that is the imperial chemical industries the full form. So, this particular company has patented that process and it has been used and adopted in currently. So, first the introduction. So, you know this methanol is used as a solvent. So, we have studied in both uh, we will be studying actually in module 5 as well as module 4 that uh, many reactions do take place in the presence of solvent because you know there are some certain advantages which we will be discussed or which has been discussed which is it can easily transmit the heat which is developed from the reaction and also the mass transfer limitation due to the mass transfer limitation solvent used sometimes in the catalytic processor. So, what we have this is a used either as a solvent or as an intermediate. So, primarily they are used in the energy sector. So, we have methanol let us say this is the main product. So, if you add up ammonia to it so you will get methylamines. So, dimethylamine then uh, th these methylamine this should be trimethylamine, trimethylamine. Then uh, if you do uh, oxidation or uh, reduction reaction, so it forms formaldehyde. The formaldehyde we will be seeing later what is its use. Then if you do uh, with react it with an acid let us say hydrochloric acid if you form methyl chloride and this methyl chloride is a precursor to several other chemicals or you can add the carbon monoxide it is to use in the form of acetic acid or in methyl formate as a ester or you add the syngas, syngas is CO plus H2 mixture of carbon monoxide plus hydrogen at different uh, quantities. You add them to get alcohol. So, these are uh, some of the reactions and finally, these are MTBE it is methyl third butyl ether. So, these are used at additives in fuels so as to uh, alter the knocking efficiency ok or uh, so how this MTB obtained it is obtained if you add up isobutene to methanol. So, if you see these are the one of the uses you can the amines then aldehydes then you have acids then formate alcohol. So, we can say if safely that is a base chemical. So, base chemical means from there you can manufacture many other chemicals. Some other uses for methanol is for example, if you add both acetone and hydrocyanic acid you will form methyl methacrylate. So, this methyl methacrylate is a very useful monomer which is used for making polymethyl methacrylate PMMA is it is a monomer for this polymer or it can also be if you add xylene and oxygen to methanol. So, you get dimethyl terephthalate or in short form is also called as DMT. So, this uh, DMT is a useful precursor for the manufacture of PET polyethylene triphthalate. Okay. So, if you see these are very useful monomers for polymers such as PMMA and PET or you can do a dehydration reaction to form dimethyl ether, dimethyl ether is again another useful fuel and if you do further dehydration you get ethene and propene. So, this you must be aware this is a C2 and C3 chemical. So, what is this used for C2 and C3? these are used for the petrochemical industries because in uh, petrochemical you convert this C2, C3 to uh, polyethylene or polypropylene. So, you know this polypropylene uh, these are of different types you have low density polyethylene, LDP, HDP. So, these are all uh, uh, ok. So, these if you can write I can write down this is precursors, precursors for petrochemical. Petro chemical. What do they form? They will form LDPE and HDPE, LD, sorry this LDPE, LDPE or HDPE 
or simply PP polypropylene ok. So, these are the various uses for ethene and propene. So, moving ahead, so let us first see what are the main reactions the thermodynamics involved and the catalyst. So, the main reaction you see the main reaction is carbon monoxide and hydrogen that is what we call as a composition of syngas. So, syngas is converted in the presence of catalyst to methanol. So, you see this is a exothermic reaction or this CO2 there can also be some carbon dioxide. This carbon dioxide is also converted to form methanol and water. And uh, these are the coupling reaction. What do they mean by coupling reaction? Means they will couple these two reaction together. Okay. So this coupling reaction is carbon monoxide plus water gives carbon dioxide plus hydrogen. This is minus 41. So you are able to form. So if you have CO, this CO can form methanol from this reaction, or it can also form this under the presence of steam to form this reaction. So if this CO2 is formed, this CO2 will get converted to methanol. So, these are the main reaction, these are the coupling reaction, that is why it is called the coupling reaction. So, now let us see the thermodynamics of this reaction. So, the, what is the thermodynamic limit of conversion? So, we will see what is the thermodynamic limit of conversion. In this, for example, what you do, you take a feed of composition of 15 percent carbon monoxide, 8 percent carbon dioxide, 74 percent hydrogen and 3 percent methane. This is your feed. So, uh, if this is the feed, you make them react. So, with this temperature, if you see as you keep on increasing the temperature, the conversion decreases. So, the reaction which converts CO and H2 to C methanol decreases. So, it means a lower temperature is preferable. So, with this pressure also, if you see from 50 to 100, so a high pressure. So, one way, so what is with? So, you have CO2, CO sorry the temperature and pressure if I want to consider thermodynamic constraints, temperature should be low and pressure should be high. If you see the corresponding data for carbon dioxide conversion, you see the carbon dioxide it is the other way down, it is getting more converted with higher temperature. Okay. But with increasing pressure, the conversion increases. So, it means that uh, if you increase pressure, both CO and CO2, the conversion actually rises. But this trend is, so you have a higher conversion as you go down. So, this is primarily due to the reverse water gas shift reaction. So, just now in the previous slide, I have just explained the coupling reaction. This, that is the same as the coupling reaction. Okay. So, this is the coupling reaction just now I discussed in the last slide, the coupling reaction because of the coupling reaction, now not the coupling reaction, this is the reverse. So, you go to the left hand side, the carbon dioxide conversion rises with increasing temperature okay, because of the reverse coupling reaction. So, this is the reason. So, primarily what you, it means that you have to conduct the experiment at lower temperature and higher pressure. So, the initially when the processes for methanol were developed, they were usually the high pressure processes. So, original catalysts were active only at an elevated temperature, but the issue is uh, okay, fine you want to go lower temperature, but the problem is these catalysts are only active at a higher temperature. So, but if you want to go at such a high temperature, then you have to increase the pressure. So, it means you have to increase the pressure to 250 to 350 bars, so as to make the catalyst active. So, it was required to achieve adequate conversion. Until the end of 1960s, original catalysts were mostly used in the classical methanol processes. So, in the original catalyst one, those catalysts which were active, those were used in the, so active means whenever I say active, it was, it is made to be active, so that you convert it at a higher temperature and pressure. But the issue is with these catalyst is the copper based catalyst with a greater activity need not to be the best because it may not be resistant to the feedstock. What is the feedstock? Feedstock is syngas. The syngas now it may contain sulphur. If it contains sulphur, it may reduce the activity. So, in the late 1960s, so some R&D was taken up, the capacity to manufacture. Now, instead of making out catalyst, what they did? They were to they manufacture sulfur free syngas. So, they were able to produce sulfur free syngas. 
so as to use the highly active catalyst. This led to the development of new generation of low pressure plants. So it means that if you want to make use of the catalyst, you take care of the other condition that is the activity of the catalyst because you need the feedstock to be sulfur free, the syngas to be sulfur free. If you make the syngas to be sulfur free, then you can generate the plants which can work at low pressure regime. So let us look at the conversion versus temperature graph. The conversion versus temperature graph implies I am talking about the carbon monoxide conversion with temperature. So you see this orange colored, this trend which I have already just now discussed in the last two uh, slide, what it is? It is at higher pressure and higher temperature, see at higher pressure. So it means that uh, you want to go pressure to be lower, so if you want to go lower pressure to this side to 50 bar from 300 bar to 50 bar you need to have highly efficient catalyst because based on thermodynamics this is not possible. So what you need some selective catalyst because at higher pressure you are getting good conversion let us say at around 500 Kelvin near about 500 Kelvin but then uh, you have the issue of the catalyst deactivation. So most of the classical processes were focused around these regions. So what was the temperature and pressure was around 300 bar and around 600 Kelvin initially 300 bar and 600 Kelvin okay. These were then modified when some new catalysts were developed then the temperature and pressure were close to around uh, 50 to 100 bar the pressure came down to 50 to 100 bar and temperature as you see the modern process because of the invention of the new ca newer catalyst around 500 Kelvin. So this is what you know uh, the, the process disruption and the R&D took up. So from 300 bar 600 Kelvin where the catalyst was found to be not active you discover new catalyst then you were able to operate the plant at lower pressure and lower temperature. So this requires catalyst, so it means that there were discovery of catalyst being active at lower temperature, it was possible to work at lower pressure while keeping the same conversion rate. So it should not be like that if I am lowering the pressure, the conversion rate, the conversion rate may go down, the conversion rate should also be with in line with the uh, what we have achieved at a higher pressure. So that's so that they have been able to capture because of the discovery of new catalyst. Now low temperature is advantageous from a thermodynamic point just now we have said that the lower the temperature higher will be the conversion. So moving ahead so we saw the conversion the carbon monoxide conversion with respect to temperature. So if we just want to recollect so what we have seen it is the modern processes operated in this region while the classical process in this region. So this is the benefit which you got when you have those active catalyst. So high activity catalyst but the problem is with high activity catalyst they are subject to sintering. This is a phenomena where occurrence which occurs due to a temperature rise. So if you keep the temperature around 500 which is the operating temperature in modern processes a deactivation of the catalyst can occur. But the issue is what they do in industries in order to maintain the rate of the reaction. So you should maintain the rate of the reaction like it was previous for the conventional process means if you want to maintain the rate of the reaction you have to restore the activity of the catalyst. Restoring the activity of the catalyst means to increase the temperature or increase the pressure which we have seen previously because at high temperature and high pressure you are getting a good result or the good conversion of carbon monoxide in conventional process. But the issue is if you increase the temperature, the temperature a constraint is placed such a manner that it should not exceed this value 570 Kelvin otherwise this would result in undesirable catalyst sintering. So what is catalyst sintering you will see. So the metal catalyst are usually the metal crystallites placed on a porous carrier. So for the methanol uh, reaction process you have a catalyst where the active part is placed on a porous support okay. So what you have a formation of metal crystallite, formation of metal crystallite will cause but the same metal crystallite will cause the catalyst to sinter resulting in the decrease of active surface area. 
What do you mean by sinter? You will see that uh, if this is the metal crystallite like a normal catalyst. So, this is the carrier. So, this part is the carrier. This is the carrier. So, carrier means which I will just show you discuss this with this sintering is irreversible. So, in the majority of instances sintering events are the result of excessive temperature resulting in thermal deactivation. So, if you see these metal crystallites they are joined together and form two dimensional clusters or it may form layers on top of each other it may form three dimensional clusters. So, you see this entire surface area is blocked because of this blocking of surface area the reaction rate is lowered. But with this the chemical environment also plays a major role. For example, if you have steam or tiny amounts of chlorine in the process it will increase sintering. The process why but we cannot get away with this catalyst because these are copper based active medium where copper catalyst here they are uh, not merely simple copper but they are some sort of nanoparticles because nanoparticles if they are used it will have higher surface area as compared to macroporous materials. These nanoparticles what they do they cannot be like this they have to be supported on some support. So, this is called called a porous support. So, like copper oxide and other metal oxides are dissolved initially in a solid solution to create the catalyst this is the preparation process. So, suppose you are trying to make copper as active area so you prepare copper nanoparticles. So, the copper oxide and other metal oxides they are first dissolved in a solid solution to create the catalyst. So, you see uh, then at a high temperature solid solution is reduced in hydrogen to produce nanometer scale copper crystals. Okay. So, if you increase the temperature to a very high temperature the entire solution will get reduced and you will produce the copper crystals. Other metal oxides will also be present in the catalyst which will help the copper crystals again sintering. So, obviously you will make catalysts that are sufficiently stable to remain active for several years. So, you should be in this region you should not be having either this condition or this condition. Okay. So, that is why research has been done and there is a company called Johnson Mathe they have been producing this methanol catalyst which I will discuss. So, but let us see what are the products ok fine we have seen the carbon monoxide conversion, but if the carbon monoxide is converted does everything gets reduced to methanol because this is where the catalyst development is a more complex phenomena due to the importance of selectivity and activity. So, if you see in the figure in the right it presents the thermodynamic data for the creation of methanol and potential byproducts from the reaction of. So, if you see the free gives energy free this is plotted the y axis is the free energy change per mole of hydrocarbon it means. So, lower the value more probable the products. So, it means lower the value means at this temperature suppose at this temperature the most likely product is methane then the likely product is ethane, then you have methane, then ethane, then methanol and then ethanol. So, methanol is not the obvious product, the obvious oral is something else that is ethane. So, but the higher alcohol and further there are higher alcohols you may also get ethanol, butanol, propanol. So, you do not want that neither you want methane, you only want to focus on methanol. So, the catalyst has to do two things, first is it has to produce only methanol and, the, and second is the rate of the reaction should be very high. So, methanol is less so in the from the figure in the last slide methanol is shown to be less thermodynamically stable than other alternative products such as methane which can be generated by the methanation reaction. How does methane form through this reaction carbon monoxide reacts with hydrogen to form methane and water or carbon dioxide will react with hydrogen to form methane and water. So, the catalyst must be highly selective. Selectivity of, the, of contemporary copper based catalyst nowadays which has been discovered is more than 99 percent. So, you should avoid these reactions with this catalyst. So, this is the trade name of the catalyst catalco 511. This is a three component methanol synthesis catalyst consisting of zinc oxide, alumina and copper as the. So, it will consider a porous support of zinc oxide and alumina where copper is the active catalytic component. The catalyst has been designed in such a manner so that you had increased activity, selectivity as well as stability throughout the years. So, what is the feedstock? The feedstock here is syngas. So, syngas for methanol manufacturing is produced by reforming natural gas with steam. Okay. 
So, if you add methane syngas, how do you produce syngas? Syngas manufacture is by reforming natural gas with steam. So, generation of the syngas is a key step. So, for example, the reactions I am talking about is simplest of the reaction. So, CH4 plus let us say half O2. it will give syngas that is CO plus 2 H 2. This is one reaction or it may also react in this manner that is I am sorry this the reactions I am providing is with the oxidation. So, when you have this steam you have the reaction like this the reforming reaction. So, methane will react with water, methane reacts with water to form carbon monoxide plus 3 moles of hydrogen plus 3 H 2. So, this is the reforming reaction where syngas is formed with the help of steam. So, H 2 O is here the steam. So, this generation of steam is a key step and it should be free from any impurity. So, the optimal hydrogen to carbon monoxide ratio for methanol synthesis is approximately 2 moles per mole. Okay. So, 2 mole of hydrogen and 1 mole of carbon monoxide. So, modest amount of carbon dioxide about 5 percent boosts the activity of the it is said to boost the activity of the catalyst. Hydrogen carbon monoxide ratio less than 2 moles per mole results in increased byproduct generation. But a ratio greater than 2 results in a less efficient plant due to the excess hydrogen in the syngas which must be purged. Now look at this issue because H2 to CO this ratio H2 to CO this ratio if it is less than 2, 2 is the optimum if it is less than 2 it will lead to more byproducts more higher alcohols which is not desirable because you have a less than 2 means what you have more of carbon oxides so more oxygen which means probability of producing byproducts is more but if you have higher more than 2 it means you have more hydrogen so the problem is more hydrogen is good it but it will be a less efficient plant because you need to take out the hydrogen because you need to separate out the hydrogen due to the excess hydrogen in the syngas. So, this hydrogen must be purged. So, you add up some additional cost so that the hydrogen is purged. So, the composition of syngas is dependent on the type of feedstock utilized. So, if you use the raw material as naphtha, the stoichiometry is just about accurate. If you use methane, it has more of hydrogen. So, it is preferable to use naphtha as the feed source instead of methane because methane there will be more of hydrogen. So, what to do with the excess of hydrogen? So, if you have more of hydrogen, for example, you are you are working with the methane as a source. So, extra hydrogen is either used as a fuel or the carbon oxide component of the syngas is raised. This can be accomplished in one of the two ways. So, this is the first way. So, what you do is that in order to reduce the composition of hydrogen, you add another component that is carbon dioxide. If you add carbon dioxide, it will balance the hydrogen and carbon dioxide's content of the syngas. So, in a way you are reducing the hydrogen content. The addition of carbon dioxide can also be accomplished by inserting it either into the reformer feed stream or the raw syngas. So, this is accomplished by either it is made to join in the reformer feed stream or in the raw syngas. Okay. So, in both instances the stoichiometric ratio for methanol production is reached albeit with a somewhat different composition. Okay. So, what we do with if you have more of hydrogen you remove the hydrogen based on something what you can say that uh, you add a third component that is carbon dioxide. What is the second method? Let us see. The second method is installing an oxygen fired secondary reformer after the steam reformer 
or simply using autothermal reforming. Now, what do you mean by autothermal reforming? Autothermal reforming means that suppose there are two types of reactions, exothermic and endothermic. So, what you do is initially you do exothermic reaction, for example, in this case it is combustion. Thereafter, you do the endothermic reaction, okay, that is the reforming. So, the heat of reaction from the combustion, the heat liberated is taken up by the endothermic reaction in reforming. That is how the autothermal reformer takes place. So, this autothermal refining, if I, if I want to make out, so this is something like this, if you have a reformer, so let us say this is oxygen, let us say you have this methane, so it will have uh, two, uh, so let us say this is the combustion zone which is exothermic. And this is your reforming zone. So, this will be your exothermic, exo and this is endo. So, it means whatever heat you generate from the exothermic reaction, you take up in the endothermic reaction. So, what are the reaction in the combustion zone? In the combustion zone, you have this methane reacts with half O2 to give CO plus 2H2, this is one reaction or you have methane reacting with 2 O2 to give CO2 plus 2 H 2 O. Both these reactions are combustion reaction and they are exothermic. While in the case of reforming, what are the different reactions you have? This methane can take up steam, steam reforming in the presence of steam. So, somewhere your steam is coming with this steam. If the steam enters, you will have this CO plus 3H2 or in this reaction CH4 can also react with CO2 to form 2 CO. So, these are endothermic in nature. Okay. So, it means that uh, the combination of these reactions will help us in reducing the oxygen. Okay. So, oxygen fired secondary refinement. So, means the oxygen fired means you are using oxygen as a fuel. So, with this oxygen as a fuel, what you do? You just reduce the hydrogen content. That is the, so the syngas thus shall contain an excessive amount of carbon monoxide. So, it means that after you do this reaction, fair enough, you have higher hydrogen, all the hydrogen is getting consumed. Okay. So, if the, it is getting consumed, so it means the, and the ratio has decreased to around 1.7 to 1.8, which will necessitate gas collection. So, what you do is this can be accomplished by either eliminating the carbon dioxide, either you eliminate this carbon dioxide, this one, either you eliminate this carbon dioxide or you can recover hydrogen from the synthesis loop purge gas. So, you recover the hydrogen from the synthesis loop purge gas, you pour, purge a part of hydrogen and recycle it back into the reactor feed. Currently, the majority of the syn gas for methanol manufacturing is produced by the, so as a feedstock, you should pay attention here, mostly the manufacturing is produced by the reforming natural gas feed steam. So, this is the reaction which actually happens in a reforming reaction, that is you react the natural gas feed steam to form carbon monoxide and hydrogen. This is what you do if the hydrogen content is greater or lower. So, this is the conventional process flow sheet. What you have? You have syn gas, it is compressed and then it is passed through an activated carbon filter which removes all the, the impurities. Then what you do? You send it to a reactor. So, these different lines which is appearing here, it is used to quench the reactor. So, once the reactor is quenched, the effluence is then taken. So, some part is released to produce again high pressure steam from the previous recycled the gas. Then this is sent, the high pressure stream is then sent to a high pressure separator which actually uh, separates out the gas and liquid content. This gas and liquid content out of that some part is purged and some part is again sent back to the reactor. So, some amount of this CO plus H2 is sent back to the reactor 
by some amount of H2 may be purged. Okay. So, then the remaining part the pressure is kept down and it is sent to a low pressure separator where due to distillation crude methanol is separated from the flash gas. I am sorry it is not distillation if, if you just simply flash it the gas and the liquid will separate out. So, the essential process of this conventional process is a reactor with a recirculation loop which is similar to ammonia synthesis. So, as I told you just now the crude methanol is separated from water and contaminants by distillation, but this is having low conversion per pass. Thus, if it is having a low conversion per pass, it implies effective temperature control. So, quench reactors and cooled multitubular reactor. So, this is quench means these are the quench streams and in between you know I told you. So, these are the quench streams to reduce the temperature of this reactor and then uh, the tubular reactor means I told you earlier if you have a reactor like this you have this multi tubular tubes you have tubes inbuilt inside. So, where some of the high boiling solvent passes through and takes away the heat of reaction. So, both this multi tubular reactor and quench reactor are used to slow down the reaction. Okay. So, moving ahead the conventional process flow sheet which is a high pressure one. So, in the late 1960s discovery of low pressure methods employing more active and selective copper based catalyst marked a significant advance. All modern processes are low pressure processes with plant capacities ranging from 150 to 6000 tons per day with the exception of plants using natural gas. Thus, those which are using natural gas can have production capacity as high as 10,000 tons per day. So, plants differ primarily in reactor design and relatively in a matter in which the reaction heat is evacuated. So, the plants will differ based on the reactor design and in the manner in which the reaction heat is dissipated. High operating pressures of conventional methanol process leads to substantial investment cost and syngas compression expenses. So, if you want to operate at higher pressure this actually results in a substantial investment cost and the compression expenses. And further you have substantial quantities of byproducts such as ethers, hydrocarbons and higher alcohols which are produced due to the catalyst poor selectivity. So, these are the problems with the conventional process. Now, let us look which is the new process. So, this is the new process which is the ICI low pressure methanol process. So, in the low pressure methanol process if you see a single catalyst bed is utilized in an adiabatic reactor, this is your adiabatic reactor. So, we add a cool reactant gas at varying heights in the catalyst bed which quenches the process. So, if you see at different height you are adding the reactant gas which is syngas. This syngas is taking heat from the effluent stream which is coming from outside. Okay. This is coming from outside. So, these are the two reactions which are occurring in the reactor carbon monoxide this is syngas is getting converted to methanol or syngas is converted to methanol plus water. Now, let us go ahead this is the reactor part. So, in this part what happens is temperature profile in the bed is sawtooth side. How does the temperature vary across the bed? It will be something like this. So, if I want to plot it on a diagram it will be something like this. You have in the y axis let us say you have temperature and in x axis let us say you have the CO content. Okay. So, let us suppose this is the line for equilibrium conversion, equilibrium conversion and this is the line for the maximum rate curve where you need to operate maximum So, at this point you need to operate. So, it means the temperature will go a tooth like a, a sawtooth shaped it means it will go something like this, it will go like this then it is cool by quenching again like this, again cool by quenching again like this. So, at different beds as you add the quenching the temperature is the carbon uh, monoxide content conversion is increases and the temperature is reduced at the same time you remain in the maximum rate conversion curve. So, the compressed syngas here is now combined with the recycled gas and is then heated with effluent from the reactor. So, if you see the compressed the initial input this input actually this is the purge gas this is the, this is the input. 
So this input along with is get heated up first by the effluent stream and then again with one of the stream which is taken out high pressure steam and then sent to the reactor ok. Approximately 40 percent of the stream is then delivered to the reactor after receiving additional preheating from the reactor effluent. So, it means uh, 40 percent of this. So, uh, 40 percent of the stream is delivered to the reactor after receiving additional preheating. So, this is that additional preheating. So, you are taking out the effluent directly from the reactor and getting heat. So, around 40 percent is delivered to the reactor. So, this is around 40 percent is delivered to the reactor and the remaining all 60 percent lies here of the syn gas after getting heat from the effluent gas. Okay, so, this is the effluent gas which is taken out here, it goes like this, this and ultimately meets this. Then what you have is the reactor effluent is then cooled, the reactor effluent is cooled via heat exchange with the feed and water required for high pressure steam generation. So, you have the high pressure steam generation, it is cooled here you generate the high pressure steam and then for air also you cool it and then you send it to a separator where the syn gas is separated and it is again compressed and sent back to the feed ok. And the remaining it is separated in a gaseous and a liquid part. So, gaseous part and some of them you send it to the reactor while the remaining some part you purge it based on the reactor condition because you have to maintain you have to maintain that CO to H2 ratio. So, for that you need to do some uh, calculation so that if you if hydrogen is more you need to purge that hydrogen out ok. Moving ahead now in the two columns if you see here the uh, it has been separated out and the product goes into a light end column the crude these two columns you know the light end column and pure methanol column the methanol is refined. The first column eliminates gases and light contaminants so this will eliminate the light ends gases and uh, the second column separates methanol from heavy alcohols. In the second column you have heavier alcohols and the uh, in the bottom side and the top product you condense methanol and here you uh, collect the waste water ok. So, you have light ends coming from the light end column methanol coming as a top product from the pure methanol column. So, that is how you get pure methanol from this ICI process. So, moving ahead. So, finally, we come to the conclusion of our methanol process. So, I will suggest you to go through this textbook and also go to the Linde process. The Linde process now holds the ICI process for the production of methanol. You should go to this link and the entire detailed uh, process diagram is given and for the catalyst you go to this particular website where they have uh, given the catalyst name, how it is manufactured and what are the present catalysts which are now commercially used. Thank you. Thank you.